Hey everybody, I am John Ellis, and this is Larry Taylor. Say hi, Larry. Good evening, everyone. Wow, you're really loud, Larry. All right, I gotta fix that. That was really loud. Apologize. We had some technical issues. Comcast was having some problems giving us a sufficient up speed, which is, you know, net neutrality has been killed. So go figure. Um, this is different than our normal shows. This is going to be a, a planning seminar, so it doesn't have the intense production that uh, we would normally put into our shows. This is really just going to be an open discussion. Please let me know if you're having audio or hearing any audio issues on the video right now. We were having technical issues with that earlier as well. We are an independent media network, so we are user supported, and that means your donations are what keep the lights on here. So we'd appreciate any help you can give us in that regard. Uh, I'm just going to go over really quickly what this is about. This is not about party. This is about purpose. And we, you know, we did a, a valiant effort as progressives across all parties in 2018, and we learned a lot. And I think the thing we learned is that we need to organize together and unify. And so we're going to be looking for your comments in the YouTube chat, and we're going to be tracking uh, your comments on Twitter with the hashtag Oregon2020. All right. And uh, you can get a hold of us if you, uh, if, if, if you want to uh, talk to us, uh, join, join the meetings. We can bring you into our production environment. If you're familiar with, with our systems, we have some technology here uh, that allow us to bring a lot of people in and have a conversation like Larry and others. Uh, info at uphillmedia.org. All right. We're looking for leaders in the progressive movement, organizations, uh, uh, former candidates, uh, current representatives, anybody that wants to get involved in planning for 2020 in a progressive movement. And that's, you know, you're following the ideals of, of Bernie Sanders, uh, Green Party, uh, no party preference, uh, they're following an issue oriented campaign. And, and so uh, we're looking to, we want to unite everybody in the discussion to plan for the candidates we want to support and run and who we want to run against in 2020. And, and it's an open discussion. We need everybody involved. And so uh, this video will be available on YouTube after it's done and we'll cut it up into segments to hopefully be helpful for other people. And we're going to try to do this every week with new information and and bring all of us together so we have our shit together by the time uh, we need to start really pushing our candidates. So our goal is really quick. Unify the discussion between progressive orgs so we can work together more efficiently and support candidates and the issues. Begin the discussion of choosing candidates and agree on one candidate for each race so we don't fight each other with redundant candidates. Every candidate should have a, a, a place to go, but we shouldn't have, we should be fighting each other with our limited resources here. We have a lot of empty seats to fill. Larry's going to tell you about h how many uh, uh, seats were open that we didn't have anybody running against. And lastly, we're going to craft a plan for 2020 together and stick to it because we win more races if we communicate and plan together. That, that's really it. I, I, I just, last one is title is good, but purpose is better. I, I want everybody to try to remember that. That, you know, when, we, when we're in a group and we really put a lot behind an individual or a candidate, sometimes we're like, well, our candidate's the best and they have to win, but it's really about the purpose, right? The purpose is for us to put progressives in office everywhere, right? So we gotta, we're going to have to, you know, swallow some of that pride maybe and say, well, maybe our candidate is better over here because there's nobody running over here. Right. So, all right. That's it for me, Larry. I'm going to turn it over to you because you're the one who actually knows knows what to say about all this stuff. So, <laughs> you're too generous. Uh, so, thank you, John. Uh, and I want to start off with three quotes from Bernie Sanders, just to remember. So, just to remind everyone uh, what his guidance was going into this. Uh, the first one was, "What my campaign is about is a political revolution. Millions of people standing up and saying enough is enough." Uh, you know, the, as we get deeper into the current uh, administration, we're finding that more people are doing that. Uh, and so it's happening on its own. But we also need to unite together as progressives. The second one is our government belongs to all of us and not just a handful of billionaires. And this goes to the Democratic Party as well. The, the Democratic Party belongs to us. We, the registered Democrats, not the people that are sitting in office because we elect them. We are, they are there because we allowed them to be elected. And the third one is the only way change happens is when people become significantly involved in the political process. This is more than just voting, uh, sitting in your ballot once every two years, or if you do it in the 
in the local election year three times uh, in a two-year cycle. It's really getting involved, helping helping us search for candidates, asking people to run, and then supporting them both with boots on the ground and financially so until they get elected. So the current state is that the Demo democracy in the Democratic Party is not healthy. Uh, we have incumbents who think they own their position. Um, we have had challengers to incumbents actively discouraged and, and talked into dropping out so that the incumbents don't have to face a challenger. The Democratic Party itself has rules that they put in place that, that put challengers to incumbents at a disadvantage. So it's not a level playing field. We're trying to change this, but uh, you know, change takes time to, uh, to affect. And you know, the, for all the people who, who, who disparage the Democratic Party, uh, the truth of the matter is that the Democratic Party, is, is, its domination has increased. And for progressives, it is really the only uh, game in town. You can go play with the other parties, but uh, the odds of you actually getting elected are less. And unless we get our own people elected into office so they can be at the table when, these, when the legislation is written, we really don't have a voice in what's being done. Well, I want to I ask you about that, Larry. I mean, I, I agree with you. The Democratic Party domination has increased. However... In our planning sessions, if we come across a Green Party candidate that we think is the right person for that job, would we not seek to support that candidate as progressives together? Yes. Awesome. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it sort of depends on the position. So if they're running for county commissioner, that's probably uh, a winnable situation. If they think they're going to win a position in the legislature, we would have to see... Uh, enormous support coming from their party to make it happen, which we have never seen in the past. Right, right. Well, okay. All right. We're, we're, yeah, reality, reality check. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so um, the, this, this incumbent protection plan has resulted in, um, uh, from some legislators, a disregard for their constituency, uh, indifference to critical issues, and we just have to look at um, the, their treatment of the national popular vote legislation in the last session um, and, um, and the tenants' rights legislation, which died in the Senate. I mean, people are being thrown out of their homes and are living in cars uh, because our legislature couldn't pass legislation to, 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 to protect them. And I'm just talking about protecting people from, from uh, no-cause evictions. Um, it's just it's just a tragic what's going on. Uh, and then, we, of course, we have the unhealthy reliance upon corporate financing and financing from groups that make the legislators feel like they're accountable to someone else other than the people. So what we are proposing is that collectively we, pro we do uh, a number of things. The first thing is that we prioritize positions to target. So uh, there's... In 2020, there will be 60 Oregon House representatives up for election. There will be 15 Oregon Senate positions, and then all five U.S. representatives. And then we have all of the local races, uh, the city councils and the, the county commissioners, all which need attention because uh, we need to develop a farm team of people who can step into the higher positions when they become open. Um, we need to establish teams to search for candidates. Uh, we need to train and groom the candidates so, so that they're competitive. And when they, we then need to support their campaigns with volunteers. Uh, I didn't see a lot of that happening. Um, uh, I saw a lot of emphasis in the primary this year spent on endorsements, which um, uh, clearly had no effect because uh, none of the, the candidates that I tracked, except for the exception of Joanne Hardesty, won. Um, uh, we, we really need to get involved with the campaigns and make sure that they're successful. 